Hi folks, Dr. P here to talk at great length, three parts, about nurturing a college or university game club. And the usual caveat, this is meant to be listened to rather than watched. The slides are there for people who are hearing impaired or for other reasons prefer text rather than to listen. This is about game clubs, especially college and university clubs. It's based on my experience at several such, beginning when I was a grad student at Duke, I'm 65 years old, through teaching to my present association with such clubs as playtesting forums. It's a lot easier than it used to be. I've been reading an article I wrote 30 plus years ago about this subject. Especially the communication part is much easier today than it was 30 some years ago. On the other hand, there are a lot more distractions and competing interests, even as there are a lot more people familiar with playing board games or video games. The college and university game clubs are quite common at larger schools, both the tabletop clubs and video clubs, sometimes called esports clubs. They're usually official clubs, and by that I mean they're able to get student government money and they're able to get facilities from the college or university to meet in. Now, I was involved with starting a tabletop club called Drago at Duke University in the 70s and that one lasted about 30 years. It's now succeeded by something called Dagger. I don't know if the similarity is deliberate. North Carolina State has had a tabletop gamer club for 10 plus years, as many as 84 attendees. On the other hand, the much newer eSports club is also much larger. UNC Chapel Hill has an informal tabletop club. University of Florida has or had three tabletop clubs and a video game club. Community colleges also have clubs sometimes. Santa Fe College in Gainesville, Florida is the sixth largest in the country. They have a tabletop game club. But smaller community colleges tend not to, both because they're small and because the students are there just two or three years rather than four to six years, as they would be at a university. The ones I've mentioned are ones I have an interest in, yet I doubt that they're exceptional for game clubs at these kinds of institutions. There are obstacles for college and university clubs. The lack of continuity is perhaps a main obstacle. Four to six years is a long time for universities, but two to three years is not so long for associate degree schools. Contrast this with groups mainly consisting of more or less permanent residents in a town or city. I know of one with the same person in charge for much more than a decade. Moreover, non-residential schools such as most community colleges face an even bigger problem. The students don't live at the school. They tend to go home when their classes finish and don't come back until their next class. So evening and weekend meetings are very difficult to arrange. People aren't going to make a special trip, oftentimes, just for the meeting. At a residential school, the students live on campus or near it, and in a sense the school is their home while it's in session. So evening and weekend or weekend meetings are the norm. The trick, of course, is to get people to come to the meetings. The movie motto, build it and they will come, does not apply. First of all, people have to know the club exists. And I know of cases where there's been good publicity for a club and somebody still hasn't heard of it until they're in their second or third year at the university or college. Second, they have to get in the habit of attending. Third, the club needs to have that continuity to last more than a year or two, to last beyond the time that the founders leave the school. If there's no meeting, there's no club. That's the bottom line. So, how do members typically hear of a club? Well, about equally via word of mouth and through searching. Frequently searching Facebook, also the web. How do I determine this? I asked members of three clubs who are on Facebook. I put polls up to ask them. Most schools also have some place where clubs are listed, perhaps even providing the clubs with sites such as a school intranet. So, the club really needs to have a presence on the school internet or equivalent on the Facebook and probably on the web. 
Now with time, you might be the number one hit to a Google search, but early on you won't show up. But you should show up on the school's club sites search. You should be sure to have a title that people might search for, and yet some clubs don't. For example, the three clubs at the University of Florida. One was called Delta Nu Delta for a long time. I don't know whether that was because it meant it, the letters were D&D &D or something else, but they finally changed their name to Gator Tabletop, which made a lot more sense. Another club was called RISC, which is an acronym for something or other. And the third club is called Paradise Gaming, which at least is obviously about games, but not about the University of Florida. Formal word of mouth also can come via organization days and such when clubs set up tables and new students come around. And at NC State, the club also runs a Catan game using a giant set once or twice a year in a prominent location. Now this is the second by a small margin, most common way for people to hear about your club, so you need to do it if you want the club to be healthy. It may also be the strongest because when you do word of mouth, somebody's talking directly to a person who's a member of the club or an officer of the club, and that can be more useful than doing a search and finding a club site on an intranet or Facebook. You can get other kinds of publicity too. Most larger schools have a newspaper, some students actually read it. So ideally you want to get a budding reporter to come to a meeting and talk to the officers and the experienced members and to any game designers if you have any. Failing that, some newspapers and magazines will take a press release and use it as an article. If the PR is written by a student, it would be a way to get something into the paper when the paper won't send a person to investigate. More in part two.